All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the show today. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, welcome, everybody, in uh, YouTube and go to webinar. If you're watching us on YouTube today and you have questions, please feel free to type them in. Um, I will convey that those questions to Steve as they come in. If you go to webinar, uh, Steve can see your questions already. So feel free to type those in as well. If you are wa either watching the video or the recording, please hit a like or a dislike if you dislike the video, uh, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate all of those things. Let's go ahead and read the legal disclaimer. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software. It is not a recommendation to, to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So as you've guessed uh, already, <laughs> or probably it wasn't a guess, but Steve uh, Bigelow is our guest today. And he does a, a great job. I've um, learned a lot with Steve over the years. We've been partners for a uh, decade or so now, um, if you can believe that, Steve. But I consider Steve probably one of the smartest guys around candlesticks out there, and probably one a great mentor to me as well. So, Steve, welcome to the room today. Thank you for coming and spending some time with us. How are you doing? Doing good. You're doing good. Yep. I was one of, the yeah, one of the smartest people I know. I could, when I graduated from sixth grade, I could hardly shave without cutting myself. So, I'd say we need to show my screen again. All right. Yep. And perfect. First try. All right. Good. All right. I'm going to get out of the way. All right. Welcome, everybody. I like showing these uh, these sessions because it makes it very obvious, or I can make it very obvious, um, especially with the uh, setup that Metastock has put together over the years uh, of us working together, where you can very easily see the signals and patterns. So all you have to do at that point is learn what the logic is that created those signals and patterns and the signals and patterns that are gonna create the biggest percent price moves. I should say it two ways. The biggest probability of a uh, bullish price move or a bearish price move and the magnitude of the move will be very substantial. So. If you have questions as we go through, feel free to type them in here. I think I'm in, uh, let me do this to make sure I'm on the right one. Uh, if you've seen my sessions before, put Y. If you haven't seen them before, put N. I'll see if I'm the right screen to show. Uh... Whoops, I guess I don't have the right screen up. Uh, Jeff, are there any answers coming through? I don't see any, but sometimes people get a little confused with where the questions are. If you're logged in with the website, you can type in a yes or a no off to the side. Uh, please let us know if you can hear us and if you've seen Steve's sessions before. Um, yeah, they should show up in the questions box. Okay, that's the one I got up there. There right. we go. All Thank right. you, Sean. Yep, so we got somebody. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. So the major factor that makes candlestick analysis so successful is a very simple premise. The signals and patterns illustrate a change of investor sentiment. And I always tell people prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. So when we see a something like this we're alerted immediately especially coming out of an indecisive trading that there's something has changed in investor sentiment this becomes our alerts 
that a breakout is occurring. And one of the best alerts is when prices start gapping. Now, this is contrary to what most investment advisors advise their people to say, stay away from gaps. You don't know what's going on. But in reality, if we know what's going on in investor center based upon a candlestick signal and they gap it up, that tells you exactly what you want to know. That not only has there been a change of investor sentiment, but that change is now creates a very strong demand. That's exactly where you want to be. So we don't have to have a lot of people ask, well, how many days do you need for confirmation to uh, to tell you there's been a change of investor sentiment or a trend change? And the answer is zero. If we can see a reversal signal, the morning star signal is one of the 12 major signals that we've identified out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals that when you see a reversal signal, especially in the oversold area, and my stochastics are 1233. So the Japanese candlestick price traders logic was, if you see a reversal signal in the oversold area, bullish reversal signal, the probabilities are extremely strong that you're gonna be in an uptrend. So anytime I see a reversal signal and then they gap it up, I wanna be buying immediately because that tells you not only have they've changed their sentiment, but now the new buying is coming in with great enthusiasm. Um, so anytime, whoops, oh, and so this was the next step. Uh, the reason I was showing this chart is this is one that we're in right now. And we were watching to see what happens when it got, got up here to the uh, uh, 50. Because why? Because that's where everybody else is watching. So we can easily see what's going on in investor sentiment at levels everybody else is watching. So anytime we see a breakout that, where they're gapping it up, that tells us a new story or a new sentiment has occurred. This downtrend now with the uh, um, now with the breakout. Oh, so let me uh, backtrack here a little bit. The uh, I don't have a lot of stuff on my chart because the main factor that you are looking at is what are the signals telling you. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. The red line is the 200-day simple moving average. This is the moving average that everybody in the world uses to make their decisions about their portfolio. A lot of people ask, well, why aren't you using exponential? Isn't that better? And the answer is we're using what everybody else is using so we can see exactly what's going on at those levels. Now, here's the most important one. This black line is what we call the T line, the eight exponential moving average. T line short for train line or trigger line but it's a very simple process. It acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So there's a very simple concept that if we see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. With the caveat that the further away you move from the T line, the higher the probability it's gonna come back and test it. So in something like this, when they gap up, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. It's just a simple, uh, I don't wanna say, prognosis of the Japanese rice traders about human nature. The T line actually like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. The candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. So when you combine those two, you've got a very powerful, high probability trade uh, situation. Um, again, when you start moving too far away from the T line, you get that much more diligent as far as watching for a candlestick sell signal, but time to take profits because that's telling you likely they're coming back to uh, test the T line. But the breakouts that we're looking for is if you're down here in the oversold area and they start gapping it up off of signals through the T line, that's when you want to start buying. SNNT, if you can see an observable 
resistance level. And now this is what we call a hammer signal, a hammer doji. It's uh, explained by the Japanese rice traders say the bears are in control, bears are in control, the bears hammer out the bottom and the bulls step back in. That's when you start looking for a reversal. So there's another hammer signal and observe the obvious is what I always say. Look where people were buying. They pulled it back right smack dab to the 50 day moving average. And we could see uh, immediately that there was another hammer signal being formed. That told us pretty much what we wanted to know. The bulls were stepping in. The next day when they gap it up right here to the resistance level. So here's the common sense that's built into candlestick analysis. If they're gapping up from a candlestick buy signal through the T line toward a resistance level that everybody can see, that means they probably have very little regard for that resistance level anymore. There's going to be a lot more upside. This is where the breakouts occur when they break out through a resistance level with a strong buy signal. This is called your best friend signal. A doji followed by a gap up. We call it your best friend because not only is there the probability of an uptrend starting, but the magnitude of that uptrend is going to be extremely strong. Uh, and so here was one we were illustrating that if you see this type of move and you don't see any reason or they aren't showing any news for it to happen. We have a very simple process. Look how far away you are from the T line. When you start getting up here, we just flip to the 10 minute chart. Because the 10 minute chart, the one minute chart, the monthly chart, all candlestick charts look exactly the same. If you're a swing trader like myself, I'm using the two, uh, I usually am in a trade anywhere from two to 10 trading days. I'm using the daily charts. But if I see something like this where they've blasted it off, I flip to my 10 minute chart. And if I see a sell signal and a close back below the T line on the 10 minute chart, I know to start taking profits because that's where the selling is going to come in. So here's what we're looking for resistance levels, and they gap up through. Here's kind of your bullish flutter kicker signal. Notice that your candle here is a bearish candle, opens here, closes here, red candle. The next day they gap it up and do a doji type day. And then we have a simple rule, the doji. They're gonna move it in the direction of how they usually open it after a doji. So when they're gapping it up and trading positive, we're buying immediately. What this kind of alleviates is that hesitation that most investors have saying, oh man, I don't wanna, I don't want to uh, chase this. I don't want to chase a stop. I'm going to stock. I want to wait for it to pull back so I, can, so I can buy it. That's the wrong philosophy for buying a strong trade. Because if they're gapping it up, confirming a buy signal, what you don't want to see is the seller is still there because that means it's not a very strong signal. You want to be buying into strength. We call this a bullish flutter kicker signal because the kicker signal is your strongest reversal signal. And if you took out this little flutter, you have a candle that opens here, closes here, gaps up and goes the opposite direction. That's your kicker signal. This is where we can use patterns to tell us what's happening at breakout levels. You can see Netflix broke out. Then it ran into trouble right here where it topped out before. But we could see this J hook pattern. And so a J hook pattern is one of the uh, oh, six or eight candlestick patterns that produce extremely high probability results. So logic says if we know that wave one of a J hook and wave three will be about the same, and we see a J hook pattern setting up right here and start going positive, what's that tell us? about our resistance level. Our resistance level is not gonna act as resistance. They're gonna break through and produce wave three. And that's exactly what's happened on Netflix here recently. So the breakout alerts use the best friend signal. 
anytime we see that doji gap up, we don't have to sit here and say, oh man, I don't, should I be chasing this? We know what that signal tells us. Look at the series of dojis. Remember, if one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. And when they tell you which way they've made their decision, you want to be buying immediately. Number one, you want to be buying on a bullish candle. Number two, the fact that they gapped it up from a doji and started trading it positive told you there's going to be a lot of good strength in that, that trade. So you can see how this reversal occurred right here. Best friend gap up through this resistance level up above the T-line. How long did you stay long until you saw a sell signal and a close below the T-line? But notice you started getting selling up here. Where do you think the uh, target was going to be? Back to the T-line. Now they've pulled back again. Doji, doji, doji. Remember, doji means indecision. So if you're seeing dojis, pulling back, what's that tell you about the magnitude or the strength of selling? It tells you they're not selling with any great enthusiasm. Then when they gap it up, that tells you your next trend is starting. So this is not rocket science. I keep telling people, this is just simple analysis of what human nature does time after time. So we saw that same thing here on every. Here's your best friend doji gap up through the resistance level, creating a J-hook pattern, an ultimate time to buy. And we saw that right now in Tesla this week. You can see how it came up here to the resistance level, doji, 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 hammer, and observe the obvious. Where did they pull back to? Right smack dab to the T-line and bounced back up. Now, why is that relevant? because nobody has the T-line on their charts or the amount of people is so statistically small, you'd say nobody has the T-line. So it's not like everybody's watching to see it pull back to this level and bouncing. It's not there. And the reason it's not there for, well, let's just say it the other way. The reason it's so effective for us is we know that nobody else has these, this indicator on their chart. And when it hits that level and bounces, it's hitting a level that's a natural support level of human nature. The fact that they gapped up from this best friend type signal through this level told us Tesla is still in an uptrend. And this is what it kind of did today. It backed off a little bit, but it finished up higher on the day. So we can use the candlestick signals to tell us where the breakouts are occurring. So remember, the kicker signal is one of your strongest reversal signals. Anytime we see a kicker signal, we want to be buying immediately because the probabilities are extremely strong that not only are you going to be in an uptrend, but you're going to be in a strong uptrend. This represents a major change of investor sentiment. So to make this simple for investors, you don't have to be a sophisticated technician to learn how to trade candlesticks. All you have to do is identify the 12 major signals, which are basically six longs and six short signals, and know what they mean. That puts you in control of your investing instead of, in my case, before candlesticks came around, I was hoping that something would go up. Now I've got a much stronger degree of accuracy to say if they're doing a kicker signal right off the 50 through this resistance level back up above the t-line i'm in an uptrend is the uptrend going to be strong don't know i'm hoping so but i know i'm going to be in the right direction with a high degree of probability a kicker signal on daku a while back and then how long do you hold on to this very simple trading rule you stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the t-line and that works both ways. We recommended shorting five last week because look where it opened. It opened at the previous day's open and went the opposite direction. It was stochastics in the overbought area. So this, the reason you wanna know what your signals represent is because if you were long on this J-hook pattern and the next morning, it opened down here. There's only one thing you want to do. 
close out that trade immediately. Because logic says if you're in an uptrend, they shouldn't be gapping it down below the previous day's open. If they do, the probabilities are extremely strong that the bears have taken control. And this gives you a pretty good piece of evidence of the strength of the bears because as long as they stay below the T line, you can stay short. I think, uh, and this was done a couple of days ago, five and below is trading down here right now. So it just puts you in the right place at the right time. And that's the same reason we recommended shorting ADCT uh, yesterday. What is today? It was yesterday that if it traded lower after the bearish kicker signal that closed below the T line, this is where you can use your visual analysis to say, well, the stochastics are heading down. They've done a bearish kicker signal. It's closed below the T line. Where do you think the next likely target's going to be? Probably the 50 day moving average, which kind of coincides with that low right there. So here's using the signals at breakout levels. This is called the bullish, remember, we just went through this. This is the bullish flutter kicker signal. A bearish candle, then they gapped it up and did a doji above the previous day's open. And what's our simple doji rule? If they open up positive, they're probably trading up positive. So we could be buying on this day, knowing that if they're trading positive, they're doing a bullish flutter kicker, number one. Number two, they're closing above the T line telling us we've got a strong reversal. Then look right, what happened right afterwards. Another gap up doji. And what's the doji rule? If it opens positive, it's gonna trade positive. So the doji sandwich is a very strong indicator there's gonna be more upside. Doji gap up through the 50. So if we're buying down here, now we're getting up toward the overbought area. That's where we start looking to, to uh, be a little bit more diligent to take profits. But the bottom line to all this is, this type of setup, this breakout is putting us in the right direction at the right time with a high degree of accuracy that we're gonna be in an uptrend, number one. And number two, the magnitude of that uptrend is gonna be much stronger than just a mere uptrending stock during an uptrending market. So there's just some very simple logic built into candlestick analysis like, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a change of investor sentiment. So we can look where they open this, right? Practically right on the 200. Did a bullish, what we call left-right combo, which is a bullish engulfing signal following a doji, has very strong implications that there's been a major change of investor sentiment. So we could have been buying any time in here as long now on that day, it may have been a little bit nervous. Uh, so we would have, if we didn't close out there, the trading strategy is very logical that it had to open positive and trade positive to continue to hold this. Then you can see how the J hook pattern kind of broke out through this level. So knowing the, having the visual analysis of signals and patterns, puts you in situations where, the, again, the probabilities are much greater that you're gonna be in the right direction at the right time, and not only the right direction, but using the patterns allows you to be in situations where the magnitude of the return is gonna be extremely strong, just again, based upon human nature. The bigger the signal, there's your doji in the overbought condition, very simple rule, Japanese rice traders say it's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if we were long, and we could see that it did a doji up here, we know when to take profits. It has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, where do you think the first target's going to be? Back to the T line. The fact that they took it down through the T line said. Now you've got a doji bearish signal. And what's the simple logic? You stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal to close back up above the T line. And again, this is observed the obvious. 
if you were short and you saw a bullish Harami, one of the 12 major signals, sitting right smack dab at a level that everybody else was watching in the oversold area, the logic tells us the probabilities are going against us. Let's close out the position and go find a better trade. A left-right combo breaking out through this level. How long do you hold this until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line? Yep, you have a dark cloud up here. So if this had opened lower the next day, we would have closed out the position with the anticipation it was coming back to the T-line. This is, uh, we were using what we call our rare uh, program. And that's called research analysis, reverse engineering. I always tell people, a lot of people say, well, don't you look at the fundamentals of a company uh, before you buy it? And the answer is no, because that's what everybody else is doing. We're just seeing what their decisions are based upon their analysis of the fundamentals. But if we see a big breakout move like this, especially coming off the, uh, the support level of the 50 and the T-line. Is this going to have more upside? Well, that's where our research analysis reverse engineering is, that we just go and see what the news was that created this. If it was something that looked like it was going to continue the uptrend, you stay long or you get ready to buy on positive trading because of this pattern breakout. So everything that is built into candlestick analysis is just simple logic of human nature. So there's our breakout. So what and it came up here and pulled back here. If we were gonna get ready to buy this one the next day, what would we need to see? We need to see there's more upside that the profit taking's over, the breakout is in progress. So here's one of the, oops, again, there's the bigger the signal, the more compelling it's gonna be in an uptrend. Now here's one of your strongest patterns, the fry pan bottoms. And this is, there's about six or seven patterns that set up uh, because of human nature. The fry pan bottom is very simple to identify. It's a big rounding bottom that you probably couldn't trade this if you wanted to until it started breaking out to the upside. So this is where your analysis of the patterns tells you, all right, we're going to be in an uptrend. Well, they ran into resistance right here at the 50. That was a good time to take some profits if you happen to be in from down here. And where would you buy? This is our next pattern. This is the J-hook pattern that is even more defined that we call a bobble breakout because we're seeing that it came back to the T-line started buying again, doing a J hook, that when they came back up through the 50, we're buying immediately because there's our J hook pattern that's uh, uh, breaching the resistance level. That tells us we've got an extremely high probability that we're gonna be in an uptrend or wave one, wave two, wave three. And it's a little bit stronger analysis than just merely a J hook pattern. You could take this 50 day moving average out of here and you'd have a J hook pattern, a high probability trade, but it becomes even better because we can see the J hook pattern setting up. Other people are just watching to see what's happening at the 50. And when they see this come back up to the 50, don't you hear so many times when people say, well, shouldn't we be buying only when it comes up or we shouldn't be buying below the 50 or the 200? We should be buying once it comes up through that level. Well, that's what a lot of people do. It's not a very effective trading method, but we know there's gonna be a lot of people buying once they see it's come back up through the major resistance level. So the bobble pattern is a high degree probability trade setup. The fry pan bottom tells you there's new investor sentiment building up, no matter what the market conditions are. If you see a fry pan bottom, It'll usually move in the right direction or the consistent direction, no matter what the overall trend of the market is. But look where the logical breakout level is. Right about here, meaning if they came up through the 50, 
you probably got a good uptrend. And notice how once they came up through the 50, they couldn't pull it back through the 50. That became your J hook pattern again, going into wave three. So I call this just logical candlestick analysis, two plus two analysis, meaning if the more pieces of evidence you can put into your visual analysis, the higher the probability you're gonna be in the right trades at the right time. Whoops, my clocks are all gone off the screen. Um, didn't see how much time we are taking, but here's your fry pan bottom. There was your breakout on upstart. What told you to stay in this when it came up through the 50? Because they couldn't close it back below the key line. What kept you from being afraid to buy or hesitant to buy on a big price move? The fact that we know what the results should be coming out of a fry pan bottom a strong price move. This is where it closed today. We're still in this one. Now, it's done a doji in the overbought condition that far away from the T-line. So what's our trading strategy for tomorrow? Well, if they started opening lower and trading down, we're gonna take profits because where do you think the next likely target is? Back to the T-line. It's time to start taking profits. So. Again, here's your two plus two analysis. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your best friend gap up above the uh, T line, confirming your fry pan bottom. And then the next day it did a doji. And what's our doji rule? It's gonna move in the direction how they open after a doji. So if we see it open positive, what's that tell us about the resistance level at the 50? It's not gonna act as resistance. It's gonna probably trade positive, telling us the 50 is not acting as resistance. The fry pan bottom breakout is working. And how long do you hold on to this? Until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. This one was closed out today because it closed back below the T-line. Fry pan bottom breakout. This is what we call the message. Notice how when it gapped up, then it traded lower, traded lower, traded lower, pretty ugly. However, what was the message? The message was people were, investors were trying to get into this with great enthusiasm. And then it was profit taking. So what do we look for with candlestick uh, charts? We watch to see when the profit taking is over. Um, and once that happened, I told us this, this message, that great enthusiasm coming in is telling us the profit taking's over. Now that enthusiasm is carrying through. And you can see where this one closed today. Came down to the T line and came back up. How long do you hold on to this until you see a sell signal and a close below the T line? What are the indicators you are using? Oh, uh, John, what do you mean by that? Was my stochastics or 1233 slow stochastics? Very simple trading rules. You're looking for a candlestick buy signal in the oversold condition. You're looking for candlestick sell signals in the overbought condition. You're usually finding a pattern breakout when the stochastics are up toward the overbought area. We've got on here the 50 and the 200, simple moving averages because that's what everybody in the world uses as their uh, uh, indicator, or their decision-making levels. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Uh, RK, yes, you just add it to your the eight exponential moving average to your chart, the same you would as a 50-day simple moving average a 200 day simple moving average. It's just another uh, moving average indicator. Now, I guess Jeff will probably be mentioning this. All this is built into our charts with the patterns, the signals and the descriptions of what they are. Uh, so he'll probably go into that when I get done here.
So this is, again, the result of a fry pan bottom breakout. Look where it broke out through the 50. We could be buying right here. Knowing Now, would we expect this type of move? Definitely not. But we would be putting ourselves in situations where the probabilities are extremely strong that this is what we expect coming out of that fry pan bottom. And we saw that today in Prego, whatever PRGO is. There's your fry pan bottom. It's not difficult to visually recognize it. And this is the result. Now, would we be buying this? Definitely, because this is exactly what this is telling you, is that there's no, uh, there's a new bullish sentiment coming into this. There's probably a lot more upside, at least coming back up to fill the gap. So this is not chasing a stock. This is taking advantage of knowing what should happen after a pattern breakout has occurred. So remember, if one doji means indecision, a series of dojis tells you get ready because they're going to tell you which way they're going to move based upon how they open after this. Now, being down here in the oversold area, if you see a series of dojis, get ready for this move. If it's a bullish candle, that's a good uptrend. If it's a gap up bullish candle, Tells you there's going to be a lot more strength in that uptrend. So that's basically all I've got today on the scans of or using Metastock to set up looking for the patterns that are going to produce the strongest breakout situations. And the reason a lot of people uh, are constantly asking me, well, how do we get ready? How do we buy these these uh, trades before the breakouts occur. That's what you use candlestick patterns for, is because human nature works the same way time after time. Do you look at volume to confirm the strength of the move? Uh, no. Uh, volume and price have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Now, if I see a candlestick signal in the oversold area, like a doji, and all of a sudden there's a huge volume spike, yeah, that just adds a little bit more credibility um, of that there's been a major change of investor sentiment or not investor sentiment, but investment, investor ownership. Usually when you see that big volume at the bottom, that's where the panic sellers are selling into the smart money or a big volume at the top. That's where the exuberant buyers are being sold to uh, by the smart money. Do you have a number one favorite pattern? Oh boy, there's probably three or four. I tell people if you don't want to, first of all, the, the bread and butter, the uh, bricks and mortar of candlestick analysis is learning the 12 major signals. I've written three books on candlestick analysis. Um, very simple to read, very uh, easy to identify the patterns and understanding what created those patterns. So. If you can recognize what human nature is doing and you can understand what created that signal, what human nature was doing to create that signal, you've now got the grasp of what moves prices like somebody that's probably been trading in the market for 50 years. So it's very simple logic or common sense that these signals are based upon human nature changing and the Japanese rice traders over 400 years have just merely uh, identified what the signals were that showed you that that change was occurring. So, John, I would say my four best favorites that I know I'm going to make good money with is a fry pan bottom breakout, a bobble breakout or J-hook pattern breakout, and your best friend signal, your doji gap up or your doji gap down, and your bullish and bearish kicker signals. If you started out with those, you'd still have more trades than you'd ever be able to handle. Um, and they would be, all be high probability trade setups. Now, the key word there is probabilities. 
not only does candlestick analysis give you a clear indication of when a trade is working, but it also shows you when a trade's not working so that you have the ability to get out of a trade very quickly. If you have listened to many money managers, they say, cut your losses short and let your profits run. Well, I've been doing this for over 40 years and I've never heard them really distinctly tell you how to cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick signals make that very easy. It's telling you when the bullish sentiment, sentiment is in control and when it, it's not in control so you can get right out of a bad trade. So the, uh, the major factor that helped me get rid of my emotions when I was trading is the fact that if I just do what the chart is telling me, I will be in the right trades and out of the bad trades a high degree of uh, percentage time. Um, oh, yeah, I think this is, yeah, this is being recorded, I'm guessing, uh, Hans. Oh, yeah, he answered that way over here. Okay, so that's about all I got. All I can say a bottom line is I was the worst investor in the world before candlesticks came along. I was even a stockbroker for eight years, hoping that the uh, brokerage firms that I was working with had good enough research that stocks would go up. And I discovered they had no more idea about what made stocks go up or down than the man on the moon. And so I got out of the business, but when somebody brought candlesticks to me, it took me three months to open up and look at something that sounded so sophisticated. But when I did, the first thing that kept slapping me in the side of the head is, this makes sense. And the more I studied it, the more sense it made. And so that's the reaction we get when we uh, teach people. We have, we've got a, I've got a website. We've got a chat room that's open all day long. Uh, I do two or three training sessions each week, Monday nights uh, for the members. Thursday nights, we have it open to everybody so they can see what the uh, kind of the uh, logic is of candlestick analysis. And then on Tuesday or Wednesday night, we'll do sessions where showing how the, how, uh, how uh, the correct entry strategies dramatically improve your trades and being in the right place at the right time, how to scan for the best trades, where to set logical stop losses using candlestick analysis, uh, things along the lines uh, like that. Uh, we have them all in video, but we can also do them live uh, so that people can ask questions right at that time. So with that, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask. If not, I'll turn it back over to uh, Jeff. We don't have a lot of questions on YouTube. However, we did have somebody say, by the by the call tag of one night one life one chat say, I dig Steve's no nonsense approach. Watch many of his videos, and I agree. I think you do a great job. I really appreciate your coming in here. In terms of the um, the site, if people want to join the chat room or kind of check it out, they can go to candlestickforum.com. Correct? Is that the best yes. place to go? Yes. Okay. Um, and aside from that, that looks like the end of the question. So I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about all that programming we did. Yes. <laughs> if that's okay. Do. Yep. I do Go want right to say ahead. thanks for coming in today, Steve. It was good to have you. I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, uh, I appreciate all the stuff you've done, both for the business here at Metastock as well as my own personal trading. A lot of the methods you talk about are things I've implemented to good success. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, Steve. Okay, and then let me go ahead and change the presentation back over here um, to me, and then I can kind of just kind of walk you through. Uh, I did do a little bit of a screen today, and one of the things, this has been um, something that we made available a long time uh, ago. We've actually updated it a few times, and it's been one of our most successful add-ons, uh, something that I'm really, really proud of personally in terms of what we've put together. Uh, drop to an or, um, Hans, to answer your question a little bit better, uh, uh, we did record today's session. It'll be emailed to you within exactly 
for approximately one hour after we hit the end webinar button here. So in terms of um, in terms of the product we've created for Metastock, it's a Metastock add-on. It's designed to be uh, kind of implemented with the tools that we've created at Metastock since the 80s. Uh, if you're not familiar with Metastock, it's been rated number one in its price category every single year for the last like 27 or 28 years in a row. And uh, what we did was uh, uh, working with our programmers and Steve and a lot of conference room meetings and stuff like that. We actually sat down with Steve and created all the patterns that he talked about and quite a few more into an add-on that, that it, uh, is for Metastock. And I actually have a list of all of the patterns that are available and they're all listed here. Uh, Doji at the bet, Doji Best Friend, the Doji at the top, the Bullish Kickers, the McMuffins. There's in total about 32 different patterns that are available. And part of this, these are the multiple day patterns that are identified on a chart for you. And uh, in the single day patterns, looks like I need to just kind of fix this slide a little bit, but here's a list of the single day patterns that are available for you. Now, in Metastock, the way that this shows up on a chart is a, a couple of different ways. I've actually did a scan already, which I'm gonna show you kind of how that works as well to find any Doji best friends in the S&P 500 and uh, global payments come up. So a uh, Doji is, as uh, Steve said a little bit in his presentation, is a Doji followed by a gap up, an indecisive bar followed by a decisive bar. Okay, had we ran the scan a little bit earlier, this would have shown up right after the market opened because all it's looking for is that Doji to be on the last bar and the gap up to be on the current bar. Okay, and so you can see all of the patterns. We had a do the doji was identified yesterday. Here we had a bearish and a bullish engulfing. Here you had another doji best friend. So all of the single day patterns and any of the multiple day patterns are automatically going to be labeled for you. And as part of what we do for Metastock, which I think is absolutely cool, is we'll actually label and identify this pattern on the chart for you. We also put together, based on kind of some of the materials that Steve provided and, and the trainings that Steve provided, we'll provide commentary written up to kind of explain exactly what this pattern is doing. So here it says the doji best friend uh, is a doji in the oversold condition followed by a gap up. It gives you some green advice in terms of what you could be looking to do with this. And I'm not gonna read it out loud, but it just, this is what we're looking for. This is kind of uh, along the lines of what we're looking for. And with quite a few of the patterns, we actually put some enhancements. Our idea was you can, with the power of Metastock, scan a whole bunch of stocks and it will give you a list of the ones that have a, a current pattern. And these enhancements kind of help you evaluate exactly maybe which patterns you want. So for example, with this doji gap up, if we we're looking at a few of them, the further away the doji occurs below the eight exponential moving average, the higher the probability there was a reversal. Now, we uh, actually had a, uh, this gap up happened Either the doji was quite far below, but then the gap up happened underneath it and went through the T-line today. Um, the other enhancement is if the day after the doji gapped up above the T-line or closes above the T-line, the higher the probability of straight, uh, the stock uptrend is. So this gapped up pretty good this morning. It went through that T-line and it just kept cruising pretty much all day. I mean, it did, it did back off at, at some point during today, which is why we have a little bit of a wick at the top, but uh, this would have been a great one to find this morning. I should have run the scan this morning, actually. Uh, there are a couple of different patterns to it. Let's see the, the five pad uh, bottom in an uptrend, and there's some advice on that. And if it does multi identify multiple patterns on a single day, that's not usual, but it's also not terribly uncommon to get a couple patterns on a day, you'll also get the explanation of that on there as well. So there you go. Uh, uh, to find the patterns, so a lot of the questions that we get is like, how, what's an easy way that we can find the patterns? And to do that, what we do is we have six explorations that are put together. And so let me show you how that works with Metastock real quick. If I open up the Power Console here, you're going to see uh, uh, Doji Dynamite, you'll see J-hook, you'll see major patterns, power signals, price patterns, and then the universe and the universe over salt scans, okay? So these first several scans are just basically the patterns. In fact, if I highlight over the pattern, it's gonna tell me this is gonna look at the doji at the top, the doji 
Joji best friend, the left-right bullish combo, the left-right bearish combo, etc. So all of the price patterns are kind of different scans depending on what you're looking for. This universe and this universe oversold scan Basically, you're designed to help you set up a watch list. So if you run this docs, you can filter out, and the criteria again are listed right here in the tooltip, any security that's below $5 who do not have an average volume of 200,000 shares daily. So you, that's a scan that you can run all of the optionables against and just have a list you can run every day. Now, this is actually pretty quick to run. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this CPS Doji Dynamite. And as I may have, I don't think I actually said this already, but we do cover, um, well, we cover 296,231,231 no, instruments. It's a huge amount of instruments. But, uh, and the nice thing about that is if you're maybe tuning in from Europe or London, or I guess London would be technically part of Europe, question mark. Um, or India or Australia, uh, we have exchanges. You can actually apply these to the exchanges that you're interested in. And we do get a lot of questions in, um, or we do get, a lot, sorry, we do get a lot of customers in a lot of different countries. Uh, India is a huge market for us, as is Australia. But for me, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here to the public list. I'm going to come down to index constituents, and I'm just going to run a real quick scan against the S&P 500. So I'm just running this Doji Dynamite. I'm going to go ahead and start the exploration, and it's going to cruise through it. Again, this is going to look at for the Doji at the top, the Doji best friend, uh, and it's all pulling the data while we're broadcasting. Uh, and it, so basically, as soon as it comes back with the results, it's going to kind of give us a list of everything that uh, kind of met those criteria. And it varies in terms of speed. It does run quite a bit faster if we're not, if you're not broadcasting on the internet at the same time. But you'll see that even to just look at 500 stocks, it's going really, really quickly, in spite of the fact that I'm using a lot of bandwidth. So, Vincenzo, hey, Vincenzo, it's good to see you. So in any case, that scan is done. Right here, we've got just the columns for what we were scanning for. So if we're looking for that doji at the top, there's only one in the whole S&P 500 today, and that was the that would show up right here, okay? If we're, oh, actually, that's not the doji at the top. That's the doji best friend. I was like, why isn't it showing up? There's only one doji best friend in the whole S&P 500, and that's global payments, which is while we were looking at that stock, okay? But you've got your left, right bullish pattern, your series of bearish or series of bullish, the doji sandwich, the bearish doji sandwich, all of those, the muffin, and the uh, also in addition, you'll get like the stochastic value as well as the close here. So kind of does a good job of us. And I love, uh, for me, the ability to do this because as somebody that stays fairly busy at work or, or would like to pretend I'm, fairly productive at work. Usually I make all the trading decisions I need to make in about 10 minutes. I run my scans, I check out any stocks in my portfolio that I want to trade, and I just get rid of the ones. And so for me, it allows me to stay very, very focused. I'm not looking in the case of the in this case, it's all of the S&P 500 stocks, it allows me to look at just the ones that actually have an opportunity that exists in the market today. So, uh, Greg, uh, sorry about that chime in the video. <laughs> I didn't mute my phone before this. So, in, in total, though, uh, it's a product that's been very, very well received. Uh, people absolutely love it. I'd encourage you to try it. It has the six explorations. Uh, those are just the market scans. It's going to help you find it. You're going to have the expert advisor. You have three different layouts. It's going to identify all 36 of those patterns. And it does come as part of a 40-minute training session. Um, in addition to that, normally that package is $499, but we sat down with Steve uh, because Steve is one of the people that I, uh, he, I respect him in the market. He does a really good job teaching. And we sat down with him um, back in January of 2020, and we created a training package where we did three classes. Uh, and here's kind of the breakdown of the classes. The classes were about an hour long each. And he talked about power profits, uh, how to analyze big breakouts, the most powerful top rate signals. And I did a bonus class on how to actually kind of scan everything. And for that training package back in January of 2020, we actually charged a retail rate of about $399 for it. 
what I'm going to do uh, is instead of giving you a big discount on the CPS Profit System 2, I'm actually going to include that as classes as part of it. So I think for me personally, I think the CPS is well worth it at $4.99, but we're going to give you all of that training as part of the package as well today. So you get the Candle Profit Systems 2, all of that recorded training that we sat down and did with Steve, all, all three sessions and then the bonus session with me. If you're new to Metastock and this is the first time you heard about it, well, thanks for coming. I'm glad you came across us today, but we'll give you a free month of our real-time platform as well as our uh, free month of our market data as well. In addition to that, we're going to give you a home study course that we call the Unleash the Power of Metastock that walks you through everything in terms of like scanning and testing and all of the different power tools that have made Metastock been rated the number one in its price category for the last 28 years in a row. And in addition to that, we're going to give you a money back guarantee. So if you do all this, you can pay $499 today. We'll guarantee that purchase with a 30-day money back guarantee. We'll include Metastock, the training, all of that kind of stuff. And if after 30 days you're not happy, well, you'll just give you a refund. But we're, I'm going to bet you're going to be happy. I want you to try this. Um, generally speaking, for $500, that's a one-time cost. If you can just get one or two better trades, it will pay for itself. And I'm very confident that this will help you do that. A 30-day money-back guarantee is probably the type of risk reward you wish you could get in all of your stock trades, but it's, this is going to be helpful for you. So I'd encourage you to try it out. $499, 30-day money-back guarantee. You can give us a call at 800-882-3040, or you can visit us online at metastock.com slash sales chat. So I thought I saw a question come in. It doesn't look like it did. Uh, give us a call, though, 800-882-3040 or metastock.com slash sales chat. One last time, I want to say thank you for Steve for coming in, for spending some time with us today. Uh, for all of those of you that came and visited us with us, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, the session. I hope you learned something. Give this a try, 800-882-3040. Stay healthy, stay safe. We'll see you at the next one.